Everybody, welcome to What the Tech, episode 93. I am Andrew Zarian, and I'm joined by, as I am each and every week, Paul Therat. How you doing, Paul? I don't have anything witty today. I'm so, I'm disappointed. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't come up with anything. I'm all kindled out. Yes. Uh, you I have not s- received yours yet, right? No. I, I And I, you know, I knew this was going to happen because the UPS guy always comes late in the day here. And I half thought, you know, I'll just run out to Best Buy and, and at 10 and grab one. And then when the Amazon one comes, I'll either return it or my wife will want it. You know, either way, we'll be okay. But then laziness ensued and it just didn't happen. So, no, I am I am fireless. Yeah, I, I received mine um, at around one, uh, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I've been playing around with it a little bit. I yep. did have to do some some things with my, my Amazon account first. Um, I didn't have yeah. it up to date. My, you know what's been happening? I had a big problem that I pre-ordered this, and it said we're gonna end up canceling your order because your credit card didn't go through. Right. And I'm thinking, I'm like, didn't they take the money anyway before I pre-ordered it? No. And it turns out, no, they don't. And the credit no, I've had card. This happened because a lot of my credit cards go through those processing center scams, and then something I pre-ordered six months ago, all of a sudden it comes up and says we couldn't do this. Yeah. So pretty. Yeah. So. It told me it, they can't process it and they're going to cancel within 48 hours. I'm wondering, I'm like, oh, I wonder why. I checked my credit card info. I couldn't mm-hmm. figure it out. So I put in a new credit card. I paid with that. And I noticed all my credit cards in Amazon are, are expired. Oh, and I'm thinking, I'm like, I have ordered stuff in the last three months. So either they just expired. I think one expired like in August. But no wonder I haven't been getting anything that I've been ordering. <laughs> nice. And I had no idea. I, Actually, because the, I did the, the one click The New York Times buy. just called me and they said, uh, hey, we haven't been able to put your card through for a while. Uh, did you still want to get the paper? And we've been getting it straight through. So I said, sure. When did this stop? And he said, July. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you calling now? They had no idea. But it was one of those. It was the same thing. I put it on a debit card. The debit card was, in a, you know, that this happens to me every six months now. You know, processing center security thing and all the cards are invalid we have to replace everything i have to uh redo my my xbox live account because i guess it's, oh, that's it's up a bad for renewal one, i know and if you let it go you're well, no, done here's why if you have a, a card that expired you have to know the number or, unless something has yeah. changed because this happened to me in the past if you don't have that old credit card number you actually might not be able to get it back no i know i actually, I know. I actually lost my original gamer tag no same thing happened to me because of this very reason yeah, I had to go with some some bizarre one, but that that's exactly what happened to me. I actually yeah. my problem was I didn't re up for a while, and then I went to re up the account, and I had and the credit card had expired, and mm-hmm. I didn't have the credit card on me, and that was it. The, of the account's and done. You're, you're done. You, you can't tell them the last card number, and they won't do it. Yeah, yeah, that's good stuff. So uh, I have it right here. I have the uh, Kindle, the Kindle Fire, the brand new Kindle mm-hmm. Fire that came out. Uh, the and I guess I'll do like a little review on the air. Uh, yeah. Since you haven't really uh, played around with it, I have noticed it's ex- it's half the size. Of That's the, classic. Exactly half the size. Right. Uh, so th- it is funny, real right? And then this is probably exactly half the size. No, it's actually three of those. It's less. So you couldn't actually fit that in your pocket, but maybe if you had overalls, <laughs> or or know, large pockets. Yeah, those big painter pants pockets. I know people are like, well, you could put this in your pocket and go. I'm like, who has pockets like this? Uh, yeah. Very Androidish. I don't know if you could see this from the from the beginning. It's, it's very Android. Okay. Yeah, this is the difference. I absolutely hate this. Uh, as you see, I was watching Ali it's McBeal. It's like a cover. F- yeah, I was gonna, I was trying hard not to comment on the Ali McBeal yeah, thing. I, that I came just right up in the I front. clicked on anything and it was Ali McBeal. <laughs> well, actually, that's one of the fun things about uh, this is true of Zoom as well. You know, you have this stuff that you, you know, Amazon must have released a service on one day and you went to go test it and you tested it with whatever, but then this thing will come back to haunt you forever. Because yeah. it's tied to your account. Yeah, now that we're on the internet, everybody knows that my favorite show is Ally McBeal. Sure. Um, it's a lot quicker than what the review said. If, if, you, if I listen to those reviews, and I think uh, The Verge was one of the first ones that did yeah. the review, and Gadget, and they were all pretty much the same thing. They said, well, it's sluggish and it's slow and a lot of the things don't work right, uh, mm-hmm. but it's 200 bucks, so we can't really complain. But I haven't really seen... If, if, and again, if I was... A regular buyer, and I read those reviews. I would turn around and say, "I'm not going to buy this." Yeah, but now you're using it, and it's actually pretty damn quick. I'm using it. I'm like, "Wow, you know what? It's actually really quick." And one thing that I noticed was really quick. So I, I downloaded the UStream 
you know, app. Is there? A, can you turn that off? I mean, I, I, I almost no. think it no, would be better can't. off if it looked like a bookshelf and you could just tap on icons. You know, like a grid of icons, yeah. like a, you know, like maybe a certain smartphone. So one thing that I noticed, I, I installed the UStream app, and mm -hmm. the UStream app on all these devices, it takes a while to load, especially on the the uh, iPad and and the Android device. So if I'm trying mm -hmm. to play a video, it actually says like loading video or optimizing or, or whatever optimizing video for your device, and it'll stay yep. like that for a minute. This literally took a couple seconds. So, so I wonder if if they did something. So here that's, it's it's done buffering. So I just clicked on it so right right now. Right. And it looks really great. The display looks really good. Um so it's, I'm actually It looks like it's really it. glossy. I assume it's fairly reflective and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. It's it's for reading it's not that great. Uh See, one that's thing my that that's my concern. I'm thinking I'm going to I'm going to buy this thing just to have a $200 video player, which to me is fine. Um, but I, I, I'm still going to need a Kindle is what I'm thinking for reading. And I read a lot of books. So let me show you. This is, this is the bug that I found. Um, and I guess this is, it's very jumpy. So I'm trying to, it's, it, it doesn't load. Like I can't, I'm having a problem clicking on it. No. Oh. And it took me this entire time I was trying to play around with it. It's not that bad. I mean, reading wise, it's not that bad. It's a little bit better than Well, the it's iPad. the right shape for one yeah. thing. Right. It's more it's I've always felt like a a widescreen version of the iPad was preferable. In fact, if you could just chop off, you know, it looks like one or two inches from this thing, you know, in the vertical, it would be a better shape. Yeah, I mean it's it's not awful. Now app wise, I played um I played a couple videos. Um I think I mm -hmm. used the Amazon video service and I used mm -hmm. Um, I think it was Hulu. Yeah, Hulu. And it, it plays fine. I mean, it's pretty good with the high def videos. It does a really good job with the video. So as far as the video player, I think it's a great video player. Right. Uh, apps are limited because the app store is limited. Is there an on-device app store? Yes. You have the Amazon app store. And again, okay. they don't do a good job at... I'll give you an example. So if I'm coming from Android or I'm coming from iOS, I'm looking for... And I'll show you. I'm looking for something that says app or app store in the icon. Yeah. So even under yeah, yeah, apps, yeah. I'm looking for an app store. The store is up here. I can't see. Uh, pull, pull it down. Nope. What was the, I mean, what was the so icon? It's all the way up here. Just a store. Oh, store. Okay. So I, I don't think it does well, a really good job. Remember, they don't want people to think of this as Android. You know, this is like its own thing. Oh, but it is Android. It's I know very, that. It, but it's I mean, exactly you got to like think, Android. my wife is interested in this. Of course, my wife has an Android phone, so maybe that's not a good example. But, I, you know, normal people will buy this thing. Um, it was in the Best Buy circular. I think a lot of people are going to buy it because they hear about tablets and they want to play around with one. And $200 is doable. And, you know, where five to 800 is not. Listen, for uh, a $200 device, this is great. Yeah, I mean, it's phenomenal. Neat. I still wish they had different memory versions, right? Because I would have bought a, a higher end version just to have more storage on it. Yeah. Um, uh, is it fair to say, so my, my, my quickie summary of this would be, without having seen one, right, is okay. that in the same way that the iPad is in many ways a device designed to consume all of that content that Apple offers, I mean, this essentially gives Amazon that same thing, right? It's, a, it's not just the Amazon stuff, but, well, maybe it is. Um, I mean, it's mostly the Amazon stuff. Yeah, it's mostly the Amazon stuff. Like, I'll give you an example. I did not have the cloud service. I never signed up for it. Yeah. And, I, and I ended up signing up for it. I got the cloud service. I, I didn't have a Prime account, and I ended up getting a Prime account. So off the bat, I have spent almost $150 <laughs> just to be involved in the, the that's environment. How, that's how they get you. So they just made 150 bucks off of me, and in they wouldn't have had that 150 bucks. You know what I don't like about the Amazon Instant Play, the Prime mm -hmm. stuff? Not everything... If you pay for Prime or you pay for the the what the Prime Video, whatever they call it, instant video. Yep. Not everything in their catalog is instant play. No, I I, I know. So uh, Amazon's instant service, which is this thing that competes with Netflix, is woefully immature compared to what Netflix has. So I can only assume it's gonna get better because it only could get better. But I mean better. they have great stuff, Paul. They have Walking Dead and they have the the, the ones that no, no, I've I missed know, so it, far it, and I can't in the watch same way it. that you know Netflix has some holes. This one has a lot of holes. Yeah, the hole is that I have to pay. 
Well, that's the thing. So in other words, they actually do have just stuff that's free for streaming. You get that with Prime. Yeah. But the, the collection of stuff that falls into that category is pretty small. Yeah. Um, you know, today. And I, uh, hopefully that improves. I mean, th that thing is not a reason to get Prime. It's just kind of a nice thing you get if you have Prime. I would never get Prime for that. I, I have Prime already. I was happy okay. to pay for Prime just for the shipping thing, right? Yeah. So they're starting to add these other features to it. But, you know, it's not a it's not a it's just a bonus. It's not, you know, yeah. we barely ever use it. I mean, it's so woefully inadequate compared to Netflix. Um, I guess how, what they're doing is, well, see, like it's fidgety. Like when you go to click on the app, it doesn't necessarily click on the app. It'll like bounce around a little bit. I want to go into the browser. And I want to show the browser. So I do have that acceleration on mm -hmm. in the browser and you can turn it off. Yeah. Um, I have it on and let's, I'm at myhabit.com. So if you look under, this is another thing. If you look here, which I guess this is their uh, recently yeah. visited bookmarks, it's, mm -hmm. it's mostly Amazon stuff. Sure. Yeah, I think, Amazon. Isn't, my, isn't myhabit.com? Yeah, yeah myhabit.com. Yeah. Uh, let's go to, there's no Twitter app. I'm surprised. Yeah, that's, good. well, you know, this, this isn't one of those highly connected devices, though, is it? <laughs> But there's I mean, a Facebook app. You pretty much have app. to be on a decent. They, there's a Facebook app. Yeah. Okay. So this is but, a Twitter yeah. app. I mean, it's nothing. But maybe, but maybe that says something about the intended market, right? You know, Facebook is normal people, and Twitter is not. Twitter is techie people. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Let me go to Win Super Site. Uh, keypad is very much like, am uh, like Android. Um, so let's go to Win Super Site. So it automatically finds it. So I like that. The That's search cool. works well. That's part of that cloud-based stuff, so right? It's it's kind of integrated. Yeah, so I clicked on this. Let's see how long it's going to take. Yeah, so no, my site is woefully sad. So yeah, there's we'll no graphics Actually, on this. Good. So, Well, it did take a little bit. Yeah, that's okay, though. It did take a little bit. So the jumping. you turn it, does it rotate, and it, it will auto... Yeah, and that's yep. pretty good, actually. The auto-rotate is really good. The, the header on the top there is pretty big, it seems, of the browser itself, I mean. Yeah, because and does that have, stuff go away if you tap inside the window? Does it? Do you kind of uh, lose? The, no, no, it doesn't go away. I wish it would. See, this yeah. is the problem. Oh, oh, okay. This does not go away. The bottom. I don't think it right. does. Maybe it does. Let me see. No, it doesn't, and that takes up a lot of space. So you have yeah, really this, does. and you have that. So it's like uh, looking through a, a portal in a sub or something. Exactly. Or, you know. Exactly. So I, I, I like it. I mean, I think it's a really interesting device and this is an, an add-on i mean i don't think this is going to be yeah in any well, it doesn't, in it any doesn't have sense. 3g so it doesn't even have 3g as an option no so this is not i mean well i suppose if you're sitting around home it doesn't matter you have wi-fi there or whatever, i don't go but, anywhere paul okay so it's good for yeah. you i have not done the e <laughs> it's perfect for me i have not used the email client yet um, i don't think i would i mean assuming that i don't know what the browser is based on but assuming the couple of things i use for email work i use the web interface anyway so I would be actually be very curious to see what Gmail looked like in there, what Outlook Web Access looked like on there. Let me go to Gmail. Actually, yeah. you know what? I'm wrong. There is no Facebook app. It's uh, the Facebook app is just uh, a link to uh, the website. website. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So let me uh, let me go to um, Gmail. This is a, a dicey time to be launching a new web browser. You know, it's kind of strange that they don't just use something mature that's already out there. Is it WebKit based? You know. Um. I want to say yes, but I'm, I could be wrong. So if somebody in the chat room knows, the browser is not awful. I mean, again, it's not an awful browser, but the way they said it's going to cache it, it's going to be super fast. Yeah. I guess, well. I guess you know what, Paul? <laughs> we may not, I may not be noticing it because it might be a hardware thing. Yeah. So this is as fast as it could get. I did see somebody did some speed comparison tests where depending on the site, it was actually quicker without that speed cache thing on. And so it kind of seems to vary from you know from site to site. Uh, it's pretty light, I'll tell you that. So I'm going to Gmail now, so we'll get a nice glimpse into my inbox. Yeah, I mean, if that thing renders like it, you know, there are two ways it could render, right? It could render like the the PC web, or it could render like the um, the mobile site. It looks like you got the mobile now, site. There. Is this how is this how mobile looks? I'm not I'm not familiar with it. I haven't used mobile. Actually, before. that's it's a different header yeah. than I've ever seen. But yeah, it, it's it's 
that's kind of like the iOS. Actually, let me bring it up on the so iPad. So it shows. Specific. It shows. I don't know if you could see, and the camera's not doing a great job. But it shows uh, Google Plus, Gmail, Talk, and Calendar. So I guess if I click on Talk, it'll take me to Google Talk. See, I'm curious yeah. if um, you know maybe they've changed. Google's always done a very good mobile client, you know, for iOS especially, or but you know for WebKit type browsers in general. Let me see if um, if they've changed anything here. Okay, so the calendar is actually interesting because it only shows one thing. It just shows what the tech that's on a four. Um, right. And then I, it's it's actually I've never seen the mobile version like this. So maybe they did overhaul the mobile version. It's a different header. But why would Google? But Google would have to do that. I mean, what, why would Google make something new for Amazon? I don't think they. I don't but, think they would, right? But maybe this is their. Well, it's got to be a no. It's got to be some kind of generic mobile. Like maybe like an ebook, maybe like an ebook reader version. Well, yeah, because right. you do have all those lower end, you know, Android ebook readers out there. Let me just. Uh... But there are there are certain things like I don't I, the the email client. You know, I'm not I'm not familiar with it. I actually I haven't even set it up, so I don't even I see would, it. Here I, we go. I'm email. Never, I'm not gonna ever yeah. use that thing. Yeah. So. No, I'll so never use it. Let's this one. see. So the, again, this is the most annoying thing. This little carousel up top yeah i don't like that. i don't like it at all and it doesn't go away i would rather just have and when you do it the long way that's all it is so it's this. yeah so when you look at this in uh, on the ipad you don't get those icons at the top you you do get tabs for google plus gmail calendar and more okay and maybe it's just rendering differently because it recognizes the you know it's a different thing it's not ios i mean I don't, I, don't I, I don't know what to say about it. You know, and it's one of those devices. I wish I could turn around and say, well, this is going to be great. Uh, this, this probably will sell a lot. Um, with a update, I think it'll be really good. And I'm sure they're going to release one soon uh, to fix some of the, to optimize the OS a little bit. But it's a very plain OS. So you're not getting, when you think of closed, you think mm -hmm. of I, iOS. It's, yep. It seems a little bit more closed than iOS. And there's a couple well, things. But it's like, also a more, more limited kind of device. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It, this is not a general purpose computing device. Um, I, I don't see. Again, this is the thing. Paul, who do you think the target audience is? Do you think it's tablet? Do you think it's ebook readers that want a little bit more? Or is it the person that yeah, wants to get a tablet? So, I mean, Amazon should be credited with making ebook readers a mainstream kind of market. But what's happened is their competitors, which is Barnes and Noble and Apple essentially, have released color versions of these things, right? And and you can't do that with a, an e ink screen. So this is kind of their, you know, product that has that color screen and 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 all that stuff. So obviously Amazon also sells all the content, so they're going to put that in there, and it's it's kind of a combination device, I guess. The uh, screen is not bad at all. I mean, like color wise and and. Resolution. I mean, I know a lot of people said that it wasn't a good screen at all, but uh, I think it's a pretty decent screen. I don't think it's awful. Right. If I spent five hundred dollars on this device, I would probably would not be happy. So right. l let's put into consideration that I would not be happy with any Android <laughs> tablet. I'd be happy to spend three hundred dollars and have more memory. <laughs> I think that would be my big. What would you use the memory thing. for, though? Considering Just everything's be, be, on the cloud. Because in other words, I go on a business trip, right? Yeah. So I want what I want to do is store some combination of uh, TV shows and movies mm -hmm. on there, whatever it is, or video podcast or whatever. Um, you don't know what you're going to be in the mood for when you hop on the plane. Yeah. You know, and considering so there's no three G. Yeah, I just store a couple yeah. of different things on there. I, what I don't want to do is be in a situation where I have to download something from the hotel because you never know what that's going to be like and it could be a lousy experience it may not it may never in fact succeed yeah so you know for me personally i'd like to have i'd like to have some stuff on it uh, and i just it's it's just there sort of just in case you know um how much do, this is 16 is it 16 or 8 16 it's 8 16 no 16 okay yeah 16 yeah yeah we 16's, know uh, 16's we know ex maybe. expandable memory yeah it would be awesome if they had expandable memory that would be great too like there's no, I don't know. If, is there a YouTube app for this? I wonder if there is. If there isn't. I'd be really disappointed. Well, if depending on the browser, you could just go. No, to YouTube probably app. not. Probably not because it's. Um, no, but there's other apps. My yeah. YouTube. You know, you could get, you could download a YouTube app, but it's very limited no, no, with you the want apps. The, you, you know, 
the real one. Yeah, it, you're very limited with the apps. So um, if you're looking for apps, you, you're kind of out of luck because no Google app, native Google app is going to be on here. You could use the browser. Right. Uh, surprisingly, it does a very good job with Flash. Uh, which I find really funny, considering it's Flash is time for it to go away. Yeah, yeah, and and it, I guess we'll lead into that story right after this. But uh, as as it's going away, they're doing a pretty good job with Flash. I wonder if you could turn off Flash and you could tell it to play H.264 or yep. HTML5 uh, instead be worth of Flash. Looking at, yeah, I don't know. I, I, if anybody knows that, uh, let me know because I would rather turn off Flash and say, okay, listen. If if the site allows it, I don't want to, I don't want to use Flash. To shut Flash off, because then I'll force it to use whatever else. Uh, HTML5 you know, uh, is Spotify on this thing. Can you get, uh, do uh, let Spotify? Me one one thing they need to add in, you know, they have that Google Cloud stuff, and you can upload your music collection, which is you know not incredibly painful, but it takes a while. Um, and then of course you can play it over the air on the device. I, I assume. But what they need is some capacity where you can check things off and download them, kind of like it works. Uh, no, Spotify, Spotify is not. RDO is. RDO and Pandora. Oh, Pandora. Oh, Pandora is yeah. good. Too. Yeah. And then I have TuneIn Radio and Stitcher, so you do have some options. Yeah, but these all require you to be online, right? So, yeah. um, you know, Amazon has, I mean, uh, Android obviously has media playback apps and so forth. But and, and you've never connected it to your PC, right? And you probably never will have to. This device, no, you don't have to connect it at all. Yeah, I mean, you could, but you don't have to. No, I, I, I plugged it in. It didn't even. I didn't even know if it recognized it on the Mac. You know, well, you know, Androids have that switch, right? You, there's different modes. So when you connect, it can connect as a different kind of thing. Yeah. So maybe you have to connect it as a, whatever they call it, MTA or whatever that is. Uh, so it can be seen as a storage device. So it, it pretty much overall, I'm going to make another video uh, probably later today or tomorrow for the device, but I think it's a pretty decent device. Now, there's a lot of key things missing, and the hope is that with over time, they're going to update it. We have to remember, what was iOS like the first release of iOS? Actually, it's really hard to remember this because the first version of iOS had a single home screen and no way to even move the icons around. <laughs> Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you couldn't even. You couldn't. Not only could you. Well, no. Actually, I guess you could add apps. Right. You could add web apps. I um, guess it's it's a hard comparison because the iPad. Yeah. When the iPad came out, it was it was so well done. You know, it was a complete device. Sure. But you look at it today. If you go back and look at that original uh, iPhone, you know, intro video, it's funny. It's. It, I don't want to say it's archaic, but it looks. It already looks kind of old. The original you know? iPad. Yeah. The original. The original iPhone. Oh, the original iPhone. Yeah I, yeah, I don't even know if anybody has that device anymore. Well, I know everybody I mean, has a 3G. They could, but they would have some updated version of the software. Right? Yeah. So, I mean, no, no one's running that first version of the iPhone software anymore, which is the, the kicker. I mean, that's the, the one that's hard to go back and remember. Yeah, that so was the year people update. were taking them to Europe and getting $17,000 bills because there was no way to yeah. you know, <laughs> say to the thing, I, I don't want to roam you know, or whatever. I mean, it just had things... I can see you live editing the document now. Oh yeah, I I, actually, I see that. That's you pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking at it now. It's it, there's a little flag and it says the rot. Yeah, that's neat. Oh, how do I do that? You are doing it. I can see. Oh. You can't. I I see it here. Oh look, you're moving your mouse. It's like yeah. a battle. I, nobody yeah. knows what we're fighting over. <laughs> nobody has an idea Get what off we're of talking that line. about. <laughs> that's pretty good. Yeah, it's not bad actually. Um, so let's go into the flash story because this is interesting. Mm -hmm. Uh, I. I don't. Did we talk about this last week at all? I know we were just we've discussed my opinion of Flash, right. but I never thought it was necessary on these mobile <laughs> well, devices. I mean, it's well, this is another one of those things. It's hard to remember. And Flash was necessary at one point. No, no, no uh, on mobile devices. I'm talking about on oh, a mobile, mobile device. device. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I I always I know yeah. being an Android user, I know a lot of people were screaming, "Oh, when are you? When is it going to get Flash? When is it going to get Flash?" And I said, "I don't. I really don't find a need for it to have Flash." Flash is like the front-facing camera on a phone. People want it because it checks off a box sure. and nobody really ever uses it. I never use Flash. I actually I installed it once and it was so bad on my phone I took it off. Uh, and I just use, you know, H HTML5. And on, on the iPad, pretty much every site now, every video site is doing HTML5. I still run into some... I don't know if CNN is actually the right one, to, you know, if that's wrong anymore. But every once in a while you'll still 
hit one that doesn't have you know the right yeah. kind of video but yeah you're right I and mean, by and large uh, the world has moved on yeah like definitely. i'll give an example we use blip.tv to do our we use youtube too of course for our video but we use uh blip.tv for our main channel so that pretty much controls our feed and for a while uh we only had the flash version until we realized they offer both so like in an iframe you could have you know both so on a mobile platform it'll go to h uh html5 on your desktop it'll go to flash i mean honestly there are probably reasons to use Flash, not, none of which I would agree with, but there probably are reasons. But video is no longer a reason, right? I mean, video is very easy to do without Flash, and it just kind of works everywhere. So why would you, why would you limit your audience with by requiring Flash? Well, now the silver. The, what, what's the story? The silver light might go away as well now. Yeah, but you know, silver light started badly as kind of a flash alternative and, and then it ended as something completely different. Um, Silverlight may go away. It may, you know, we don't know. They haven't really verified that, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't use that as a comparison to flash anymore because that's really not what Silverlight is all about anymore. What do you I think mean, it, is start, gonna, it started that way. What do you think is going to happen with all these different video standards? I mean, especially, I guess, content delivery standards with Flash, it's the next five years for Flash are done, right? I mean, I cannot imagine how they're eliminating mobile and mobile is the most, you know, it's the growing, fastest growing platform out there. Yep. If they're saying, well, we're not going to concentrate on Flash on these platforms, they're pretty much saying, yeah, over the next couple of years, we're probably going to drop right. Flash. I'm actually surprised they didn't say that. You know, they it's sort of like the United States announced in whatever year, you know, we're going to pull out of Vietnam or something. And then it took another five years before it happened. But, you know, they need to make some kind of an announcement where they say, look, here's the roadmap. And we understand that the reason we can't, you know, that Adobe's not just going to drop Flash immediately is because they need to make sure that all of their developer tools are lined up and, and can do those things for HTML5 that previously required Flash. You know, that they need to give developers who have, invested a lot of time and effort into flash yeah a way to transition their own web apps from flash to html5 and i think once that's available they'll probably just do it but you know the uh, flash maybe arguably never made sense on mobile devices simply because by the time these sophisticated mobile devices came around they had html5 and html5 had matured to a point where it made it was you know good for that kind of thing and the, i i honestly i I don't think Flash makes sense, period. On you don't, desktop at all. computers, I don't think it makes sense. Yeah, it's it's interesting that they've decided that this is this is the way they're going to announce the death of Flash in some weird, you know, twisted way where they're saying, well, yeah, it's dead, but not not really, though. You know, on the pli on, <laughs> well, on, on desktop, is, you it's know, still here. look, you when you what's the saying, you know, when you make a hammer, everything's a nail. So. Uh, Microsoft makes Windows, so the iPad comes around, and their response to that is, "We'll we'll make a version of Windows that runs on an iPad." Um, you know, same thing with Flash. You know, Adobe. I don't know how. You know, I don't know as much about Adobe as I know about Microsoft, but let's just say that their revenues split into three different categories, and one of them is probably all the creative stuff like Photoshop. One of them is Flash, and then whatever the other one is, I have no idea. But you know, that's a big amount of money for them every year, and it's not something you can very easily give up. Because you have this kind of history with it, and it does perform well every year. It doesn't help when a guy like Steve Jobs comes out a few years and just like craps all over your um, technology, like he did, uh, as I was right surprised. as he may or may not have been. I was surprised that they pretty much said that. Uh, yeah, Apple's pretty much responsible for killing Flash on the mobile platform, and even if that's true, why would they give them so much credit for it? <laughs> well, I actually, yeah, I. I <laughs> I think that was just a, an attempt to, you know, Apple and Adobe go back very far. Uh, Adobe was founded in part to support Apple hardware. Yeah, I mean, they had a like, pretty they had a pretty good relationship for. Yeah, many always years. did, always did, uh, and it wasn't until you know it was it, it wasn't really until I, I honestly think that the Steve Jobs stuff about Flash had nothing to do with Flash. Steve Jobs it was a very caustic individual, um, and he took things very personally. And when Apple made the transition from a classic OS you know, 9 or whatever to Mac OS 10, Adobe was the last major vendor to come on board with OS 10 native versions of their most important apps. Even Microsoft had a version of Office, which is a major undertaking, well ahead of Adobe doing one with uh, Photoshop. And he yeah. really 
was really, really mad about that. And he used to burn Adobe in public at public events, you know, Mac World and so forth all the time because of that. And eventually, of course, you know, Adobe finally shipped their whatever Mac OS 10 version of uh, Photoshop. Um, so I think when, when it came time to flash, you know, the roles had been reversed. You know, Apple needed Adobe back then. Now Adobe needed Apple. And this was Steve Jobs' chance to dump all over Adobe. And I think that's all it was. I think it was political. You know, people can, you know, people always want to put the industry seer label on Steve Jobs like he gets everything right. Like he saw the future. He knew this wasn't going to yeah. work. And I no, really think that had nothing to do with it. No, I think it was just, just vindictive. I think it was just a vindictive jerk about it. I think that's all it was. I mean, you know, and you want to you want to hold this up to be some kind of a bigger thing. And it really wasn't. It was just a petty, typical Steve Jobs kind of thing. I think that's all it was. So yeah. I, I think Adobe giving Apple credit is their attempt to say, let's mend fences. You know, let's go back to that uh, thing where we were friends again. I guess. I mean, uh, I just thought it was a very interesting statement. But this, I get what, where does this put a lot of the people that were saying, you need flash and this is why I'm not getting an iPad. The iPad sucks because there's no flash on it. And, and I said, well, there and are uh, many like reasons. I said, this is just check. You know, people, yeah. uh, there were convenient excuses. Like when Windows Phone first came out, people would say, oh, well, it doesn't do multitasking. And you say, well, actually, it does do multitasking. It just doesn't do it for third-party apps. You know, oh well, you know, it doesn't have this. You know, it doesn't have copy and paste. I need copy and paste. Even though, like, and then nobody, you ask them, when is the last time you copied and pasted on your phone? Nobody ever uses this. And every time I say anything like that, people will always email and say, well, I use copy and paste all the time. I, I don't mean literally nobody, but I mean you know, <laughs> yeah. statistically, <laughs> yeah. almost nobody. Um, Wait, Paul, you have to you have to know this by now. Everything is literal <laughs> on the internet. I know it's the pedantic uh, nature of the internet. Continues. I, I, I one time said something like a billion people or a billion yeah. like billionaire. I said something with a billion to go. That that is a totally incorrect stat. I'm like obviously, <laughs> obviously when, not when, a billion um, people. Like a billion when, people bought when, it. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, go ahead. Um, I'm when Windows XP uh, celebrated its 10th anniversary, I started writing. I wanted to write something about it before I read anything, you know. And what what wrote, what I wrote immediately was something like, "Over a billion people must have used this thing." And I actually went back and corrected it. And I thought, "Well, I don't actually know that for a fact. It seems like it's been around for ten years. It would have been. I mean, you know, they sell three hundred million computers a year. Obviously, well over a billion people are Easily. using Windows yeah. XP. But then I thought, well, you know, that seems a little far fetched. Let's not get crazy about it. And then I changed it to hundreds of millions of people. But then I went back and wrote read what Microsoft wrote and sure enough over a billion people yeah. <laughs> so um, you know that was just a fact you know that in, in that particular case I mean but you try to you know you want to be realistic about it or whatever um, yeah. I'm going to uh, I'm going to move on to a new segment of the show and, it, and that's what I learned about Paul today and this is my question <laughs> for Paul Paul oh wow Paul okay. are you are you big on IDE tagging on what IDE tagging uh, ID3? ID3? ID, what am oh, I saying? ID3. ID th why am I saying IDE? Oh, my God. I'm reading it backwards. Wow. Whew. Well, dyslexia strikes. Yeah. I just read it backwards. Wow. I ID3 tagging. Do you do ID3 tagging? Like, are you one of those people that has to have all I the am, tags incorrectly? I am retentive about this. I I'm and the it, same it, way, too. It gets worse, though, because... And I've, I've gone back and forth on this one, but if you main two, if you maintain two copies of your music collection, which I sort of do, and by that, I, I don't mean physically there are two different collections. I mean that you access it through Zune, which I have to do for mm -hmm. Windows Phone, and then also through iTunes for the iOS devices. Um, there are all kinds of weird little problems yeah. that occur between the two. And this is a, I, I spend, I actually spend time every week Just managing. Just retagging. How, how many songs do you have in your library? That's a good question. Let's I mean, do you one. have, are you talking like thousands? I mean, right now I'm looking at my MP3s and in iTunes yep. and I've, this morning I had 15,000 Oh no no! I have and 4, I said, "That's impossible for me to, to for me to need fifteen thousand songs." So I went, I, I looked through it, and a lot of I, them are duplicated. All right, so here's the thing. I, I, I again, this I, I've spent. We could talk about this for an hour because I have literally spent way too much time not just thinking about this, but working with this. Oh kind of oh stuff. oh! Yeah. So, That's what well, I spent I'll all just, weekend. I'll just throw on. one thing out here for you. So I've done what you're describing, which is I looked at my collection. It was much bigger at some time, and I said, "You know what?" There are duplicates in here. There are songs and albums that I don't like. And so I spent some months where I literally rated all of my music. And anything that was rated one or two stars, deleted. I looked at it once and then I just deleted it. So 
Okay. There's some sense to that. But the thing is, you know, I didn't grow up 10 years ago. I grew up in like the 19th. Well, I grew, grew up in the 70s, but I came of age in the 80s. And when mm-hmm. I was a kid, albums still meant something. So there are, in fact, these albums that kind of deserve to be listened to as a as an album, you know, as a complete thought, sure. if you will. No, you're um, absolutely not like right. Today. Not like today with singles and so forth. I uh, I'm big on the albums and and of course I'm not talking about yeah music but I've destroyed now. half of my albums you see what I'm saying yeah yeah see I so. I'll give you a perfect example I mm-hmm. I decided that I'm gonna and and I bought a lot of CDs so I decided that one day I was going and this is years ago I was gonna yeah. rip every one of my CDs and of course every like every other normal person I have some stuff that's pirated uh, I pretty much deleted all of those things because they were like 32k bit rate stuff from Napster from 10, 12 years ago, you know, so I, all those are gone. And mm-hmm. I went through my MP, I went through my uh, CDs. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to rip this. I'm going to rip this. I'm going to rip this. I didn't do a good job at tagging them. So what did, you, what did you do this with? What was the, it was on windows. I'm talking maybe seven years ago. I don't even remember how I did it. I, I can't even yeah, tell you. It was okay. some, it was some cheapo software. <laughs> that, that was, that should have been the name. I'm actually. trying to think what I used originally, but okay, go ahead. So, Sorry. Some of them are tagged perfectly. Yep. And some of them are just the file name that says 10 Mumford and Son dash song. Oh, no. And then it says like like out and then it'll be like 10 out of 12. And that's it. And I have no way of retagging this. No, this is that is completely unacceptable. Yeah. So I'm at the (laughs) point where I'm actually thinking I might delete anything that's not tagged properly and start over. Well, I haven't seen this yet. Um, I I was on the iTunes Match beta, so I had access to that, you know, for a while. Yeah. Um, the nice thing is when they switched from beta to public, I didn't have to wipe up my collection and start over, so okay. it's all still there. But I was curious because because of what I did. So, for example, I can take a a classic rock album like Back in Black, right, by ACDC. Sure. I only have two songs in that album. Now. I have a live album from them. I have kind of a greatest hits album. So some of the songs that would have normally been in that album are elsewhere. Yeah. Some of them I just deleted because they weren't good songs. But do you remember a feature that iTunes had or maybe still has? It was like a complete your album kind of a thing. Yes, and they still have it. I think they do. I think it's uh, get album. No, no. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Complete your album where we find. No, no. I'm talking about get album art. No, no. Get album art is one thing. But I'm saying I'm surprised I haven't already gotten some thing from Apple because I have all these incomplete albums where they could say, you know, we could complete this album for yeah. you and we'll do it for, we'll do it on the cheap. You know, like you only have two songs out of 10. Normally that means you would have to spend $8, but we'll do it for four. Yeah. You know, and I would, I almost would, I, I could picture almost I doing it for some albums. I would too. See, I, I, and it's funny you brought up ACDC because I'm looking at it right now. I'll give you a perfect example. <laughs> well, I, I have because they're A and you know. I first. have um, I have their entire. I have every ACDC album, wow. and like I'll give you an example for Ball Breaker. Yep. Some of the the genre is listed as hard rock. Some is classic rock, and some is rock, <laughs> and that See drives that? <laughs> me crazy. I also have this particular album. I would just note that most of the songs are not very good. No, it's not a good <laughs> album at all. Um. But, uh, yeah, so I deleted most of them. So I have... You mean to tell me... I just noticed, I just, you showed me, I have an error in here. Two songs are listed as track one. Yeah, see, this is, this is a problem. Now, what I did, I made the mistake of oh, that's a, that's trusting these, uh, these, I guess, tune-up softwares, like, uh, me, uh, I think it's uh, you, Media no, Monkey. You, no, no, no. I got no, Media Monkey. And Media Monkey did a pretty decent job at filling in the blanks. Like there but were a lot to, of albums. You almost have to on. make a copy, right? Yeah, yeah. See, I, I'd be so thing. afraid to run something like that against my only master copy of the music collection. No, and I did, and the reason why I did that is because first, I, I, it was like travesty. I had everything cataloged on my own, so I had everything <laughs> in the folders and by the artists and by kind of music it was. And I just said, when I got the Mac, I had no idea that, because I never used iTunes, when iTunes says, hey, would you like us to sort your library? I'm like, sure, thank you. It decided to put everything in individual folders in God knows where. Now, unless I create like an automated software to kind of pull everything out and extract it, there's no way of me doing it. 
and I haven't found anything that does it. So now I had to go and redo my entire library. I, I pieced some of, it that, some of them together, but the biggest problem is that I guess uh, Media Monkey decided that every album that I have is a best of album nice. and renamed everything from to the same best of. So if I had a live acoustic... And yep. if I had, um, if I had it on the best of, like let's say Billy Joel, if I had the the live album and mm -hmm. I had uh, Turnstiles, I think Turnstiles. Oh, you don't want to, you don't even want to know I, how I handle live music. I have my own naming conventions. Yeah, it's bad. It's bad news. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because um, Apple released their their iMatch right service, the iTunes matching service. Yep. Uh, which finally launched, and what it's doing is for people who don't know, uh, it's. No matter where you got the song, so it could be your song, it could be ripped, it could be uh, pirated. It, it, if you give them twenty four ninety nine a, a year, they're going to give you free DRM free uh, two hundred fifty six kilobit AAC files. Surprise! It's not AAC plus considering it's streaming. Well, I think that is AAC plus, right? Two fifty six AAC. I think that's the. I don't think so. Yep. Uh uh. Okay. Because I know people were upset over it. Mm, okay well i haven't so this is one thing i haven't done yet but you know you talked about ripping your cd collection i've done that twice but the thing is i have i still have some songs in my collection that are 160k mp3s i've got 192 mp3s i have a lot got, of 320 i have 320 yeah, MP3s. they're all over the map right yeah and so there is a part of me where i think you know can some consistency here would be kind of interesting you know consistent quality um, I actually, I don't buy too many CDs these days, you know, for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. But every once in a while, I'll run into a uh, a band that has a CD that, you know, just isn't available online for whatever reason. Or I just want to get it immediately. Or maybe it's an international version that they don't typically sell here or whatever it is. The Armenian and, version. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, <laughs> in the old days, it used to always be the Japanese version. Because yeah. those versions always had additional songs on them and, and whatever. But, um, you know, I'll just use iTunes and I use the... 256k, you know, I do whatever it is, AC plus kind of default. I don't do anything with it. I don't, you know, it's fine. It's it's, it's very high quality. It plays on everything. Do you so, uh, have you noticed that people are saying that it's mistagging? Uh, I'm just going down uh, some of the latest complaints about it. Some people yeah. saying it's mistagging certain songs. Um, which I find I that interesting. Seen, so I haven't seen it yet. But the thing is, of course, to notice that what what I've seen is. There's a weirdness where you go in, like a lot of the albums, like the album art appears to be gone. And then you're like, oh, that's weird. You know, the album art's gone. And then you do a get info on an individual song, and then all of a sudden the album art pop pops back up. So I'm going to have to spend some time. Yeah, because I don't, think, I don't think iTunes puts the album art in the actual file in the ID3, yeah, it, it no. puts it in its own folder. So if you take that music and you go somewhere else, you're not going to have the tag. Yep. You're not going to have the image. Yeah. So on, on this BC that I'm on right now, this is my master collection of music, so it's everything. Um, the other thing I've noticed is there's stuff I bought or maybe got free. I mean, it, there's, there's I, don't, I don't even know where this stuff comes from. I'm looking at, I see two albums now. One of them is by someone called Amanda Blank. No idea who that is. Don't recognize the album. Do we have to fill it in? No idea. What, no, I just know. No, no, it's there. <laughs> okay. Well, actually, it's just there. In fact, it's, what it is is it's up in the cloud. So I'm thinking I must have gotten this free. Maybe it was one of those Starbucks cards or it was like a, you know, iTunes every once in a while would do like a free playlist of some kind. Mm -hmm. Don't know who this person is. But this is an example of something that's up in iCloud because it somehow was at one time associated with my account. But I kind of want it not to be there, right? <laughs> so I, I don't know who this person is. I don't care. I just want it to be gone. So obviously I could delete it. And then it says, are you sure you want to delete the song? Yeah, from iCloud. So I could actually delete it from iCloud. Yeah. It's curious. I mean, it's, it's, that's, an, that's a very absolute thing to do. Right? Now, what happens, now, what happens next year if you don't re-up? Um, well, you lose the access to the cloud-based songs. So I, I suppose... But you have all the, those free songs. I mean, you, got, you still, got... Yeah, they're still there. I mean, this... like Actually, I saw this woman. I will download this song. So let's, uh, let's download it. And then we'll go look at it. You know, this is an opportunity for people who, you know, ripped poorly or did the illegitimate thing and used yeah. file sharing services um, to legitimize their, you know, collection for 25 bucks. It's not a bad deal. And I have to think that Apple 
did some kind of a deal with the record companies where they all said, all right, we're all going to get a slice of this. We're never getting money from those people. So this is better than nothing, you know. And this particular song is a, I'm just looking at it now. I mean, it's a, it says M4A, you know, it's an AAC file. It's 279 kilobits. You know, I mean, I, just, I mean, I could play it in, I'll just ensure, let's see. I could play it in Zune. It plays fine. So it's not. why, and, and again, uh, AAC, according to some, is better than MP3. Yeah, I mean, I, it's it's essentially MP4, right? It's the yeah. next version of the codec, basically. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. So, if you have everything in MP3, would you would it affect you in any way by going to AAC in a bad way? No. No. In fact, I think it would be better. I'd rather be have better. everything in 256k AAC. AAC. Now, the question is, am I anal retentive enough to go to an, another computer in my house somewhere and set it up to download every single song in the iTunes? match cloud library right to that pc and that's how i could get those that's yeah. how i could get those files and that but then it's going to be organized in some way however itunes organizes things which is not necessarily the way i organize my music so then i would have to kind of recreate my master collection using this itunes thing and i bet a lot of people are going to do that you know and i i get and i guess depending on the size of your music library it might not actually be a bad thing to do, even just as a one-shot deal. I'm going to pay the 25 bucks. I'll spend part of the next year doing this. Yeah, I'm looking here at my collection, and most of my stuff is 128. I mean, like every other normal person, I think every, most people have 128 if, if it's decent quality. But uh, I, mean, yeah, me, I have yeah, some 192, 160. Wow. Metallica oh, yeah, no, no, like, yeah, my, it's, They're all over the map. Yeah. This one is, yeah, I'm looking at one now. It's an MPEG, three, uh, MP3, 160K. ID three tag V two point three. You know, I have I shot the sheriff in 1411 kilobits. <laughs> it's it's, it's actually all yeah. it's all Bob Marley. I guess it's, it's also Bob Marley. you know you get those things where you have like the comment field has some weird code in it and that yeah. was is some identifier from whatever application I used to rip this thing like a could have been real player it could have been music match you know whenever it was six years ago or whenever I did this I'm curious if I play this. I'm a little concerned about how many of these things don't appear to have album art, but then you do a get info and yeah. oh, there it is. Then it just it pops up. But for so twenty five bucks a year, I mean, how, how this is a great, great thing. Unless everything you have is in three, you know, three hundred and twenty, and now you're going down in the quality. But I don't even think you're going to make a big difference if you go down. And your entire library is legitimate I, now. Three twenty MP three versus yeah. two fifty six AAC. AAC. I'd still take the AAC, and I bet the file size is smaller. Yeah. Uh, I think it's such a bad deal. Well, that's actually not. A, yeah, yeah, it's pretty. It's a pretty good thing. Um, but now I, I'm going to stare up my my library forever now. Uh, I, well, I'm I'm too because now I have to fix it, you know. But I also have these things. I I'm going through this, and you can see these things where it's like, what the heck? I don't. You know, some of these groups are like, what? <laughs> like, where did this come from? Yeah. And I, you know, they must have been some of those freebie things. Like, and again, that's this is like that Amazon thing we were talking about where. Something you did in the past is coming back to haunt. I have, I have the big, the biggest problem, and then we'll move on. The biggest problem I have is that stuff is the name of the file is track one, the artist is track one, and the album is track. Oh God! I have no. I mean, I should just dump them all at this point. That is, that is completely unacceptable. I have no idea what they are. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, v you'd have to play it and then be like, okay, I think I recognize. Well, what's a two twenty four VBR? Variable bit rate, variable right? Bit rate, yeah, yeah that, sure. those aren't good. That was another thing. You know, I went through a little phase where I did a lot of variable bit rate stuff. Yeah. And then it's like, you know what? Whatever. Is this thing yeah. playing? Uh, Logitech, Google TV was a mistake. And that's a quote. Um, <laughs> I heard, for, I wrote a, I, a tiny blog post about this. Yeah. It, and, and my thing is, is Google's beta mentality uh, going to cause them to fail in the consumer market? People don't I, want actually, beta products. I wouldn't even call it beta mentality. It's more like an engineering mentality. Yeah. And I, I, I think that's good for some things, like email, and not so good for the consumer stuff. <laughs> you know, like music. Yeah. Or, it it or seems like it seems like this device totally flopped. Uh, by the way, did you play around with yours with your new uh, Google TV? I did not. Yeah. It's, it's, I should I should do that right now. It shows how much interest you have in the device at this point. I'll turn it on behind me. 
you know, most people don't have zero interest in this device, but um, I have not received the update on my Logitech box, and I'm surprised considering that sold the most units. But uh, Logitech pretty much, the, uh, their CEO uh, told analysts the other day that uh, the company company uh, lost a lot of money with Google TV. I, I think everybody knew it at this point that they lost a lot, but that the compl- that the software is incomplete and said that the uh, it, it wasn't ready for the consumer launch. Right. I don't think anybody... I think most people in the in I keep the, waiting for them to say something I didn't know already yeah, know. You know? I, I think I think when this device <laughs> came out, everybody knew it was a first gen device and it was pretty much not complete and not the vision that I guess Google or, or the designers or software people had. I I have to, way too much experience with this stuff, courtesy of Media Center, to have ever thought this was ever gonna be anything other than a mistake. This stuff is hard. But it's now really LG hard. LG saying that they're going to jump on board, and LG is going to be, I think, the go-to uh, device for Google. Good luck. I, I just don't. Honestly, I, this is a crazy. Well, no, I, I, I won't say that. I would say there are a couple of companies that have a chance to get this thing right, um, and that doesn't mean that one of them succeeds and the rest fail. I think Apple already has is in a good place with Apple TV. And by the way, let me just uh, actually that reminds me. I meant to write something up about this, so let me just say this. There are all all these rumors about Apple coming out with HD TVs. I actually think an HD TV from Apple would be somewhat of a mistake, okay? Because Apple's business model is based on repeat buying of hardware, and people are not going to buy a new HD TV every single year. I mean, a couple goons will do that actually. Now that I said that, but you know, people will buy like a new. Oh my God, this new Apple laptop! I'll buy a new one of those. You know, oh, this new phone! I'll buy one of those. New iPod Touch! I'll buy one of those. You know, new HDTV, I mean, I just, it just doesn't seem like an Apple. Unless they're selling a $700 TV. Okay. That's not an Apple thing to do no. either. But no. I that, mean, that's the only possible little, way you could justify. Field, but, no, that's the only possible way you could justify spending, you know, buying a new TV every year or two. But Google, you know, uh, Google is doing what Microsoft did. And, you know, again, having played with this stuff so much with the media center stuff, having guys from Microsoft come to my house with, uh, an 18 wheeler full of boxes, full of cables and wires and all the weird connections and all this crap that you have to do, you know, over and over again. Um, I, you know, you open up the Google TV thing, and what comes out of the box is like this IR blaster that you stick on the front of your cable box. So you can control the cable, and you're like, you know what? I've been there before. This stuff doesn't work. And so I look at companies like I think what Apple's doing makes some sense. I think what Microsoft is doing uh, with Internet TV makes some sense. And then I think it's kind of Everyone else. And then the big player at the end of the day is the same big player we have today. It's the cable companies. The cable companies with their crappy platform. Right. Most yeah. people are still going to use that. And, you know, I, I, God, I swear at this thing almost every day because it never works. But the DVR that comes with Fios mm-hmm. does the basics. And it's like, you know, it's so painful doing anything else. I will actually put up with this. And I think that's what people do. And the thought of adding another element to the mix, you know, another connection, another uh, input that they have to deal with is, is just too much. Do you, now, do we even, I don't even think, if you, if, when I read the book, I initially thought, wow, the TV, it's going to, you know, they're going to put out a TV. I don't think they're going to put out a TV. You know, he never uh, said he's uh, actually, Apple, put, he, he never said he's putting out a display. Or, or maybe I don't remember reading that, but I don't think Steve Jobs ever said they're putting out a display. Oh, I don't know. He I just, mean, he, I don't know what he said. I mean, I, I think he said more to that guy than the guy wrote because, and he was protecting them yeah. for you know competitive reasons. But um, to put out a TV for Apple to put this TV, this this you know TV that we've been talking about for almost ten years. I mean, there are certain journalists that have been writing about an Apple TV year after year, and. I don't know why they would want to get into that market because it's not a profitable market because you do not how many people a how many people are going to how many people are you going to capture in that market b most people that go and buy TVs uh, that are that can't afford your TV probably will not go buy your TV yeah they'll probably go buy some something else they make a box that costs ninety nine dollars that's it just plugs into the TV works great you know for what it does it's it's limited in some ways but. Um, especially for people like me that have a lot of media on their computer and they can share, you know, do the home sharing thing. 
you know, Apple TV works great and it gets better all the time. You know, if you have an iPad 2 or an iPhone 4S, you can actually walk into the room and blast the display from the device onto the TV using Apple TV, and that's pretty cool. I, um, I had high hopes so, for BoxyBox. I had a lot of high hopes for that. I bought that. I set it up. I looked at it, and I said, this is ridiculous, and I returned it. Really? And I almost never do stuff like that. But so. have you used the, you know, it's based off of Windows Media Center. Uh, Not is? Windows Media Center. Windows, uh, the, what, what is it called? The, oh, you mean the Xbox Media Center? Yeah, the, yeah, um, the Xbox X, Media X, Center. BMC or whatever. That That's what it's pretty much based yeah, off of. Yeah, okay, but... And I guess they, they decided to commercialize it and sell it as their... It's a cool-looking box. It, it's nice, but, again, too expensive. It was $300 when that thing came out. I don't think anybody's going to spend $300 for a half a computer. Sorry. So you have it running over there, right? Yeah, That's I guess. It. Is that what it looks like on yours? I, nope, because I, I don't have mine working. I don't know if you can... Uh, I guess you can see it. Yeah, look at that. Uh, I can't. <laughs> yeah, no, it's totally oh, different. It does. Here we go. There we go. No, it's totally different than what I have. It is. So, you know, I don't like this. I don't know. You know, the uh, the Sony has this horribly complex remote thing, right? Um, typical Sony design. Um, and, it, you know, God, they just make it so difficult. But this yeah. is just stepping through the various bits. Of yeah, the logic that comes with an actual keyboard. That's It's a pretty nice keyboard. But if you're in bed and it's like 12 in the morning, yeah. you don't want to have a giant keyboard to f play around with. Look at this. I don't have a tuner attached that, to it. That so explains everything. That screen right there. Yep. There it is. The Google TV, ladies and gentlemen. That's it. <laughs> I know. I, I, I don't know why I don't use it more. Okay. So you get the little menu yeah. thing at the bottom. And that's nice. You know, th this is the kind of unobtrusive, you know, let's turn that thing off. Yeah. Uh, Apple TV type of thing. You know, it's nice. There's nothing wrong with that. But nobody's doing it right. Again, we're going to, we constantly say this. Um, Oh, did you did you get the Xbox update? No, I did not. Okay, I'm upset about that. Uh, me either. And I was part of that special preview thing, yep, and they sent me a weird CD. Yep. Uh, and I didn't get it. I was actually yep. I was very excited because I turned it on for the first time in a couple of weeks, and it said, "Oh, you have a you have an update." I'm like, "Oh, here it is," and I'm like, "Yes, exactly. like, it's nope. here." And it's like, "Nope." I'm like, "It still <laughs> looks the same." That's not it. Yeah. My everything's the same, so I haven't received it yet, but um, we'll see what happens with that. Nokia phone, uh, Nokia and Windows phone partnership. People are saying that it's paying off because developers are more interested. Now, and then <laughs> the only thing unfortunate is that today Gartner came out and said, actually, from a market share standpoint, uh, Windows phone actually lost share uh, in the previous quarter. So, <laughs> I mean, yeah. developer interest is great um, and important, you know, but. Obviously, people need to start buying these phones. But I guess I guess they lost. They could possibly lose share because people are holding off. You know, yeah. <laughs> I guess. Uh, I, I mean, mean, right. I'm doing I, PR I for them now. No, that's a very that's a very nice uh, way to say it. I maybe. I mean, I think Nokia again is a bigger deal than we know here in the U.S. And and in the same way that Kleenex is tissue for a lot of people and. You know, Xerox is the same as making a, a whatever, a, I almost said a mimeograph copy or whatever, you know, like a yeah. photocopy. Um, you know, Kia is phone, you know, to millions and millions of people around the world. So I do hope that there is some benefit to that, you know. And I do feel like if Windows 8 takes off in the market that, you know, that will help drive some sales of the phone stuff here as well. But Well, in Europe, uh, what's the, uh, the prominent smartphone on the market? Is it the well, iPhone? It depends on the market. I mean, it, it, tends, it depends on the country you're in. I mean, this is something. Yeah. This it's was in this study. Out. It was very interesting. You know, country by country, um, interest in these different platforms varies widely. And even unscientifically, on that last little trip I made, um, I always, as I think everyone listening to the show probably does, you know, you walk around a train or a plane or in a bus stop or in a public space and you see people with tablets and phones and computers and you look at what they have and what they're using and you kind of make these little. I don't, judgments about them or whatever but um what do you, you know, notice France, what do you notice when you're around what do you notice people are using because my the number of phone, number one phone that i notice people are using is a blackberry it where though well i, I guess you, because you, i'm in new york city yeah where i am but, okay, I, but i'm pretty much in new york you city. live in new york city yeah everybody has Financial a financial cap of the world a lot of businessmen you know that kind of stuff that makes sense like for example in paris 
uh, and this is, again, completely unscientific, just driving around in the metro. They don't even um, need phones. They just talk to their hands arrogantly. <laughs> no, no, they don't. But they 50% of the people had iPhones, easily, 50%. Yeah. Of the remaining 50%, half of them had Blackberries, and that blew me away. But again, you know, Paris is like the New York City of France. Yeah. So maybe that maybe that's why. I can't explain it. But the other 25% was like those candy bar phones, you know, like pre-smartphones, um, small phones. And I, that was confusing to me. I didn't see any Android devices. But then we went to London, and Android's everywhere. You know, there's still lots of iPhones, uh, not, not even close to 50%, but at least 50% of the phones I saw there were Android. So I think it just depends on... That doesn't mean that that's going to be the case in rural areas of those countries. In fact, that doesn't mean that at all. I bet if you went to rural France, iPhone usage would drop off sure. dramatically. You know, it, it just depends on where you are. I mean, it could possibly happen that Windows Phone is the, the prominent phone in, in Europe. You know, it could, it could possibly happen because they have that association yeah. with Nokia, which is a very, very strong Yeah, we don't get this because honestly, there is nothing like Nokia in the United States. And we just don't understand it. You know, we think Apple is popular, but we don't get it. It's not like that. It's much bigger than that. Well, I had a friend. I had a friend that a lot of my friends are Greek, and and they they would go to Greece when when we were, I guess, when I was in high school. They mm -hmm. would all go to Greece for the summer, and they come back. And over here, everybody had Nextels in in at that time. Nextels, yeah. and I, I'm trying to think, I had a Palm Trio, so that's how back this you weren't, is. You weren't like rocking a StarTac. I, you know what? I had the StarTac. I had yeah, the, the Motorola StarTac. Then I had the Motorola V, the tiny little one. Yes. Check yes, yes, yes. Did I show you that? I still have it. It has a little bump antenna, doesn't it? Yeah, like let me, you don't let have me to, get The this. big deal was you don't have to pull out the antenna. This is thing that is the right thing? So I've been left to my own devices. This is where this is where my friend Joe would message me and say, "Compelling TV." Yeah, I, I had yeah. This is very compelling. Sorry, we'll edit that. No, no, it's okay. <laughs> uh, but I had a little tiny one, and then I had a Nextel, and then I had yep. a Trio for the. Lo I I swore by the Trio, and when you in the when you say Trio, you mean the Palm OS version. The Palm right? OS, yeah. I had yeah, the, the classic, Trio. Yeah, the Trio the original, 600. In some ways, the original smartphone, right? The yeah. keyboard and. I had the Trio 600, 650, 7, 750. Never had the Windows model, though. Never got the Windows edition. And I, I hung on to that fact, thing I for dear life. It. Which one? The, the 7? The, the Windows one. The 700, I think. 700W. Yeah, yeah that, that was sounds the one. about right. Yeah. By but, the way, beautiful. <laughs> beautiful device. And, and Palm always did an awesome job with the, you know, the charger and the, and the little dock thing it would sit in. It was always beautiful. They... they they always did a very high quality job, yeah. you know, with that kind of stuff. But I, I you know, when when we had those phones um, in Greece, everybody has a has a Nokia. Those little, you know, those little yeah. uh, candy bar looking Nokias, yep. Yep. and that's They're all. Everywhere. Everybody, everybody has a Nokia. So the branding is is we don't know here, but it's a respected brand. I think that's why even the their flagship Windows phone, that Lumia eight hundred device, is kind of small. You know, yeah. it's kind of a small phone. And I, I think here in the United States, just like with SUVs, you know, we're used to everything being really big. And I think to a lot of people here, we looked at that. And I, I wouldn't be surprised to discover that they come out with some huge, flat, ginormous phone just for us because that's what we want. But, you know, there's a, a Samsung Focus Flash that's like this or the two Lumia devices are – they're small by U.S. standards. But do you but, think – do you think that – that deal is going to, you know, now that there's Windows Phone, do you think they're going to, it's almost like it's a new phone for them, right? Are they going to? It's just the next phone. You know, these things connect to Nokia services. Um, obviously, the U.S. changed. But I think people, you know, when you move up from a candy bar phone, which is not a smartphone, um, even though there may be a couple of simple apps on there or whatever, it may be S40 or something, you know, they, I think they are okay with it being different, you know. And let's not forget, Nokia just announced a bunch of new phones that aren't Windows Phone too. They're they're still serving that part of the market. You know, we talk about phones, we talk about smartphones. You know, Nokia is smartphones, but they're also cell phones and or these uh, feature phones. You know, and that's a much bigger market for them. It's lower margin and all that kind of stuff, but it, it's still a big deal. So I mean, they, you know, they're still going to have non Windows Phone stuff. That will serve those people if they're not ready to move up to a smartphone. They don't want to, you know, pay the, the monthly fee or whatever. I'm going to the Nokia uh, 
site in, in Europe. Let's see what phones they have. Yeah, a lot of them are just they're running. Uh, then none of them. Yeah, are so they have a new there. product line. Um, begins with an A. I can't think of the name of it because we don't have them here. Um, let's see if they could go to Nokia.co.uk. Um, let me see if they have them here. Actually, I'm trying to find it too, but uh, I do find it. I do find it interesting how. This phone could become the biggest thing in Europe, but it could also bomb here. Nobody, it might be that nobody there's, wants to buy it. There's plenty of um, uh, previous experience to suggest that might be the case, right? Yeah. Um, but it, I wouldn't it occurred even to say. Me, you know, um, but Paul, I they, wouldn't say that the Nokia is the best looking Windows phone right now. I mean, I guess it's it, it's a pretty phone, but the ones that I saw with you guys uh, last week, yeah, those were great yeah. looking phones. Well, the you know the Nokia's have their own style to them, right? So the, there's two kinds of Nokia phone. If if you remember that phone that Mary Jo Foley had, the white one, the uh, HTC Radar, yeah. it, was, it was kind of white with gray accents. The the lower end Lumia is a lot like that, except it has these color panels you can take off and 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 switch out. So if you want a pink one or a blue one or whatever the colors are, and then they match the on screen tiles to those colors. So mm -hmm. they have uh, unique to Nokia colors that are available in the themes in Windows 7. That's kind of cool. So that, I think there's a certain um, audience of young people that really like that kind of thing. And then the higher end one, the, the 800, is made out of this kind of polycarbonate, you know, really high quality, beautiful feel to the hand. It's curved, which is kind of, it's hard to show that in a picture, but the front of the device, the whole, all of it, the glass and everything, mm -hmm. is actually curved. It's, a, it's like a bar of soap or something. And it's... It has its own kind of neat, unique vibe to it. It's it's a uh, it's a beautiful, you know, it's a beautiful phone. I'm just curious to see how it does. I hope it does well. Now, and before we wrap up uh, in a few, I, I saw you made a tweet earlier, and then you <laughs> took it back. Yeah, well, because you took back your tweet. I, I made the mistake of believing somebody. <laughs> well, no, actually, let me be fair. So. It was such a big thing, I thought I should tweet it. But then I started researching it because yeah. I wanted to write about it. And then when I researched it, what I found out was it wasn't the way someone had originally described it. So can I, can I say what the source was for the original post? Yes. Uh, the San Francisco Gate. Well, actually, so as it turns out, they republished it. It was okay. from Business, Business Insider. Okay, it was Business Insider. They stated that uh, Windows 8 is coming to phone. Yep. N and then you said, never mind, it's... Balmer never said that. <laughs> well, this is this is classic. So I have to say, so for whatever it's worth, um, the guy who wrote the story, Matt Rostoff, is a great guy and very credible, and I like him a lot. And uh, it was disappointing. It's too bad this happened, but it was really funny. the The quote he had from him, it said, "Where is it?" Uh, he said, "We are driving Windows down to the phone with Windows 8." Right? That sounds very clear cut. Yeah. There you go. Except that's not what he said. Uh -huh. <laughs> he said, we are driving Windows down to the phone, period. With Windows 8, comma, you'll see incredible new form factors powered by Windows from to, and then he went on from there. So these are actually two sentences that he kind of, you know, put together as if they were a sentence. So driving Windows down to the phone with Windows 8 means one thing. Driving Windows down to the phone, period, and then saying something else about Windows 8 means something else entirely. Yeah, but so Windows, what, he, what he was really saying is we're doing all this stuff with Windows. We're all about Windows. Everything we do is Windows. We have Windows on the phone. We have Windows over here on PCs. We have Windows and tablets. But I mean, pretty much Windows 7, uh, Windows Phone 7, the UI is very similar to what Windows 8 is. E e well, yes, but that uh, doesn't mean that they're the same thing. It's so, not the same thing, but it, it does. Maybe what he means is it, no, there's going to be a honest, connection a amongst every thing, platform. I, I think it's fair to say that no matter what happens from a technical perspective, that Windows 8 and Windows Phone and the Xbox will share a common, they, they would call it like a UI language or a, UI, a kind of a common user experience, even though they're not identical. They're, yeah. they're just going to be similar. Tile-based, that's the new look and feel they have. But it, but it doesn't mean they're the same thing, right? It doesn't mean that Windows Phone 8 will be a very stripped down version of Windows 8. Well, which, which is the I don't, kind of thing we're looking for. Do you, do you think that's what would yeah. no, work? I think that's what's going to happen? Actually, yes, yeah. I do. But that doesn't but not that, now. That, that was not confirmed yeah. today. So I was I was hoping it was, but it wasn't. Interesting. Yeah. I hope it does well. 
I'm talking about Windows 8. <laughs> I do too. Uh, I, I, I wrote a little, you know, uh, thing about like, what happens if it doesn't, you know, because th there's a fear here. I mean, Windows Phone 7, for example, has not taken off in the market. That, that's kind of recoverable in a way because Microsoft never had a large market share of that. They, yeah, mobile. so they're not a major player. It doesn't kill, you know, but what happens, what, what if Windows 8 experiences the same resistance that Windows Phone did? Now, it's not going to ever be that bad because it's Windows. I mean, Windows mm -hmm. will just go out on new computers, but, you know, it could be like Windows Vista, right? Um, that would be a disaster and I think would in many ways trigger what I think of as a, train re a chain reaction because, you know, you've got this generation of people that you need to reach immediately and if you don't, then, you know, all the guys who are using Facebook and Gmail and, uh, you know, Netflix and Amazon and all this stuff and not Office and Windows go to school and they use their MacBooks and they use Chromebooks and they use tablets and they don't really care about Windows and don't care if it exists, don't care if it's a big part of their life and they go to work. Yeah. And now they're not but, demanding that at work. They're demanding this other stuff. But it has to be. I mean, we saw, we've saw we seen Windows fail in the past, right? I, it, to, well, to Windows has never truly failed. No, right? and I, I mean, don't think it'll ever truly fail. I mean, in, in the sense of the word of failing and bombing. Well, I, I don't think I, they'll I, ever... I don't re I'm, I'm not good with numbers, but I just saw some usage share stat that was... You know, Windows Vista, widely acclaimed as one of the worst disasters in Windows history. The usage of that operating system today is like 30 times as much as every version of Mac OS X combined. It's something like that. It's some huge amount more. No, no, and no. And that's I, a disaster for Windows. Yeah, and that, and that was a failure, you know? right? I mean, overall, well, the media tore it sense, apart. Yeah. yeah, and that's what I'm yeah. talking. I'm not, I, don't think, I don't think people are going to stop using Windows. Okay, I see. I, I think they are. So, and oh, here's, the, so? here's why. Okay. Because five years ago when Windows Vista was around or 10 years ago when Windows Me was around, you still had to use a computer. Yeah. So even if you didn't like it, you know, as a business, you might license window that that version of Windows and then backtrack to the previous version because that was one of those things that Microsoft has always made possible. As a consumer, uh, you might try to buy a computer with a previous version of Windows, uh, which a lot of people did uh, when Vista was around, or you might just suck it up and say, you know, whatever, I'm just going to use this thing. I don't care, whatever. But you didn't, you know, you really weren't going anywhere else. Today. People can get mainstream computing experiences from smartphones, from that Amazon tablet you just bought, from iPads, from any number of Android devices. I mean, now there are choices. And now you've also got people thinking, well, you know, for my daughter, um, for my wife, for my mother, for my father, for my brother who's not uh, necessarily technically sophisticated, these are people who need to get email, mm -hmm. they need to be on Facebook, they need to browse the web. And guess what? You don't need the complexity of a Windows PC to make that happen. Maybe yeah. this other thing makes more sense. So now you have alternatives. And that's why I think Windows 8 is a much bigger bet than Vista was, or you know, not that Windows Me was a big bet, but that thing being a disaster like those other two would be worse because now people have alternatives that are really inexpensive, you know? Yeah. Uh, the, only, the only thing that, that uh, I'm thinking that could kill this, right, it, yeah. I don't think I don't think people not liking the UI is going to kill it. <laughs> I, I think well, a lot of people a lot of people are going to start it off and say I hate this I don't like this at all. And, you can turn it off, okay? And, okay, and so they we, don't so have to solve use that it, problem. or they get used to it. I think a lot of people are going to reject it regardless, even if they've spent a day with it or five minutes I, with it. Honestly, I, to me, that is a disaster. You think so? I don't want people to get used to it, and I don't want them to switch it off. I want them to love it and want to use it, and if that's what and well, but you're gonna have you're gonna have <laughs> that, sure you're gonna have that group personally. But I mean, in other words, that that to me is the that's that's success, you know. And I'm looking at I use this thing every day now, you know. I look at it and I think I, I don't I'm I'm having a little trouble picturing this future, even though I know that we haven't seen the apps. You know, basically for me, you know, because of where we are in time, I have to use all these old apps. Uh, they run on the desktop. You know, the interaction I have with the uh, start screen is is fairly minimal, and when I go back to it, what I what I see on mine is mostly apps that run under the desktop, and then a couple of weather applets, and you know a couple of small things like a tw you know Twitter app and a Facebook app and stuff like that. But mostly it's you know it's classic apps. I mean that's 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 where we're at. So it's you know it's hard. So we'll see. I mean uh, I, 
there are important things coming, you know, around the beta and the release of the Windows Store, and we need to see that stuff. Well, but. the beta is going to be the beta is really going to show us uh, what it's like, and I think we're going to get a good idea, and yeah. Microsoft will get a good idea of what most people think of it when the beta's out. Now, is it going to be a public beta like they did with yeah. Windows Seven? Yeah. Or okay, mm-hmm. I mean, what what happens now if if Everybody what hates if it. it sucks? Yeah, yeah, but like, what does Microsoft <laughs> no, do? That's, uh, that's but, a valid question. But I mean. they have a couple months to kind of work on this, right? I mean, they could go into panic of mode course. and say, "Oh no, my no. God, and, what and are there, we going to do?" Maybe there are things we don't know anything about. There, there are questions around the ARM thing, and and will those things be like iPads, and will they not have the desktop? We don't know. I mean, there's there's all these questions, but you know, Microsoft has a much bigger responsibility than someone like Apple does because you know, if you think back to like Mac OS X Lion. If people don't like that UI stuff that they put in there that is like iOS, you know, frankly, they don't really ever have to use it. Microsoft yeah. is replacing yeah. things. I mean, this is a much bigger undertaking. Um, it's a big move. It, it's a very big move. So, you know, and, and it's fraught with peril. <laughs> you know, it just is. So, I mean, it, it makes life interesting for people like me and you who, you know, follow technology and care about it. So we have stuff to talk about. But. You know, don't ever forget. I mean, the, the stakes are really high here. I could just uh, imagine Microsoft goes to DEFCON 1, Bomber presses the button, and everybody's CPU pops out of the computer. <laughs> right, and then and you that's realize how it's, it like a, yeah. it's like one of those Claymore things. Yeah, you know, everything. Those, <laughs> that's it. It like pops up. You have that one moment where you're like, damn it. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like, over. Yep. <laughs> and then it's, and that, and that's, that's what happens. And then we, yeah. we move on in life. We open a door and the nuclear holocaust hasn't happened, and then we walk off. Yeah, we go buy yeah. a tablet. Yeah, we go buy we go buy a Nook, <laughs> we go buy a Kindle. Uh, I'm yeah. actually getting my hands on the Nook also. Oh, you are. Yeah, yeah. I, I went a little crazy. I went tablet. No, no, I think it's okay. Crazy. I mean, I'm, for me personally, I know I'm never going to buy a Nook because I'm I'm so thoroughly invested in this Amazon ecosystem. You know, I'm just I'm going to stick with that. Do you think it's 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 the fact that you could just buy anything in Amazon? I mean, the store also is a big well, yeah, selling. That's, point. that's actually a huge advantage. Yeah. So, I mean, again, you know, for me, I, I, I may be a, a, in a on a business trip someday with this device, and I want to rent a movie for the way home, and that's something I can do on that device. Just, again, assuming the connection is okay. Um, and one of the nice things about it is I have that whole library to you know choose from. It's nice. I mean, it's a nice advantage. And I think I think the the I want to word this correctly. The appearance that that Amazon has, it's a positive. It's a positive look. People don't think big evil company when they think of Amazon. But, <laughs> not yet. But, but yeah, not they, yet. <laughs> but this device, I mean, in reality, is yeah. a giant What's shopping cart. You got a little man. Oh, yeah, purse I got, there. I got the little pouch. Yeah, I got the little pack for it. <laughs> my little man purse. Just oh, my like son this. would never stop making fun of that. It's not mine. It's for my wife. Oh no, you don't have to excuse it. I'm just. <laughs> comes with a little throw. look, a little handle it's, here. It's nice. it's nice. I can hold it so people don't steal it's all, it. It also functions as a brass knuckles. So <laughs> you know, but but people don't picture Amazon in that you know as this not big yet. corporate Again, store. Not yet. It, it, already with that browser, right before anyone even saw it. Yeah, a lot of privacy implications. To this. What what is this? You know, all of my browsing activity is going through your servers. You know, that's a little sketchy. What I'm wondering uh, now is. How about these other other companies, other stores, right? Big stores like a Walmart. I yep. would not be surprised a Walmart teams up with one of these yep. lower end tablets and they put out the Walmart device. And Absolutely. it has access I think to that Walmart. Would play pretty well. Except, That's, you know, Walmart hasn't done a good job on the uh, on the e-commerce side or you know on the uh, content side, but maybe they would have to, you know, they could partner with whoever. I mean, um, eventually, this you know, my friend had posited a future where, you know, Best Buy is going to go away, because Best Buy is just the place you go to look at stuff before you buy it at Amazon. You know, who buys uh, it? But but people are still buying like I computers guess so, from but, there. <laughs> you know, five hundred dollars uh, more than it should be. I certainly used to do that kind of stuff with books. You know, I'd walk into a bookstore and, you know, yep, I, I'd like to get this book, but I'm going to buy it on the Kindle, and I'd order it right there from my phone. You know, done right. So. Obviously, it's a little different when you're talking about a computer or whatever, but it's not very... I do this all the time. You know, you walk, I walk into Best Buy, uh, I'm looking at video games in the Xbox aisle, and I'll look up the review to see if a particular game has been reviewed well, uh, for example. I, I'll still buy it there in that case, but I could picture people walking around to Best Buy with a little phone and saying, you know, we can get a better deal on this at whatever. I got my original MacBook from, uh, from uh, Best Buy. 
And it was the best deal that I could have gotten. Wow. They uh, they gave me the they gave me free Best Buy warranty on it because I I said yep. well I'll just go I'm like why am I gonna buy it from you I'll just go buy it from the Apple store and they said well we'll give you the free three year warranty nice and they gave me free mobile me uh, and the guy the sales guy turn, turns around and he's like listen if anything happens like you happen to drop this yeah yeah uh, down the stairs uh, at the two year and you know at, at like the one day before the three year mark uh, right. you drop this we're gonna have to give you a brand new one. <laughs> that's awesome and that's how we pretty much sold it i never dropped it down the stairs but i did sure. drop it and break it twice and they ended up having to replace everything that's great yeah not that you broke it not that i broke it but i mean it was <laughs> yeah. it, it was kind of worth it for that because they gave me a free 300 hundred dollar warranty but i guess when if you're buying a mac from there it's going to be the same price at the apple store so that's one of the only things that you would say well i know i could get this at the same price right right everything else is just crazy Crazy, crazy stuff. All right, time to wrap it up, Paul. Uh, I went a little Already. long today, and then I have to do my review of this Kindle. <laughs> so that's going to be fun. I still have to get mine, so it's going to be a while. I thought I'd be posting pictures of this thing today, but... You want me to take some pictures? Do you want some pictures? No, no, I'll, I will do my pictures. I can take pictures for you, Paul. It's okay. I'll just okay. I'll post them in the morning. I can For my secret I can, stash. I, can, I don't care. It's all right. It's all right. Uh, check Actually, out Paul's while website. we were talking, got an email from it, UPS. It's on its way? Yeah, two of them. I get uh, oh, nice. the, the touch as well as a kit. Uh, oh, nice. Kit. Yeah. Uh, go to our website, guysfromqueens.com. Also, check out Paul's site, WinSuperSite at winsupersite.com. Uh, today's post, which I'm going to go there right now, it was something like, no, let me take that back. Sorry, Balmer did not confirm <laughs> Just Windows. Kidding. Yeah, that was the best thing because that was the first thing I saw. I'm like, what, what is he talking about? Sorry. Yeah. Uh, great site. You could also check Paul out every Thursday at 2 p.m. East. On Windows Weekly, one of my favorite shows on the uh, entire internet. Uh, Paul, thank you so much. Thank you, sir. For uh, putting up with me for another week. Uh, I would rub it in your face that I got the Kindle, but uh, you'll make fun of my little man purse here. <laughs> well, yeah. I pro Mark, come here for a second. <laughs> Actually, hold on. Let's see what, let's see let's what Mark see. thinks about the bag. Let's see. I'm going to hold it up here. It's not a bag. It's, it's a little cover. I'm curious if you have anything to say about that bag right there. How would you describe that? Describe what? That little bag he's got there. What would you call that? Nerdy, I guess. Nerdy? Yeah. Was, yeah. You know, yeah. What, would, what kind of a bag is it? It's a, What would you call that? It's orange. Okay. You're not really not working. It's not working. I, I thought you he doesn't right. want to insult me. It's a man purse. It's a man purse. Yeah. Man purse. There yeah. it is. Yeah. Yeah. I had to prompt him for that. But. Look, it opens up in full. Well, no, only halfway. You could just you could put other things in there. <laughs> he opens it up and his perfume falls out of it. <laughs> <It's> nice. <laughs> we'll see you all next week, everybody. Good night.